In this tutorial, we're going to take an in-depth look at the various ways that we can go about bouncing audio in Studio One. And we'll start with a basic audio event here. And let's just go ahead and give a listen to how it sounds right now. Okay, now also take note that I've got the inspector open. We can open that by clicking on the eye. And here I've got a shade device. Let's double click. I'm going to go ahead and power that on. And then we'll play that back again with the shade. Okay, so I'm playing this back again with the shade just to show that when we're bouncing our events here, any inserts that we have or any adjustments that we've made to our channel fader or any panning, those are not going to be taken into account when we perform a bounce. Okay, but actions that we perform on the event itself, they will be. So let's go ahead and introduce a fade out here. And I'm actually going to right click and let's transpose this by two semitones. And I'm going to right click. Let's activate the gain envelope. And I'm just going to put a little say a little decrease in volume right here. Okay, so we've made some uh, changes to our event and we'd like to bounce that to a new file. So I'm just gonna click once to select this. We can right click and then we can come down to event. Then over to the right, we have a menu where we can select bounce selection. You can also use the shortcut keys, control and B. I'm gonna go ahead and click once. We can see that this has been processed and we can even see visually the waveform has changed from that fade that I introduced with the gain envelope. Now let's go ahead and play this back. Now we can hear the shade. But that's just because it's turned on here. But it hasn't actually been printed to our new bounced event. Now, if I were to come to the browser and let's open that up and come to the pool, we can see that we now have two audio files in here. Now, the second one is going to be the bounce. If I were to left click, hold and drag this in, then we can actually go back to our original adjustments. We can see our gain envelope. Let's close out the browser. So if you'd like, you can bring in the original and make some more adjustments and then bounce again. Or of course, you can always undo. And speaking of undo, let's go ahead and undo our changes. And we'll right click on our event and turn the gain envelope off. Now I'm going to press two to activate the range tool and I'm going to select some sections of our event and delete these out. Just to show that if you have multiple audio events that you'd like to combine into one to make them more manageable, we can come to an empty area, then click hold and drag to select all of these and then I can control B to bounce. So now we can more easily manage these if we need to move them or make any adjustments. But let's again undo because I'd also like to show that while these are selected, we can press G and then we're going to create an audio part. Now the advantage to this is that if I were to double click on this, we open up the editor and we can still act access those individual events inside and make adjustments to things like the gain or adding fades and so on. Let's go ahead and undo that. And we'll close out our edit window. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that we do have transform track to rendered audio. So if we go ahead and power our shade back on, we can hear that working. Now, this is just one effect, so this is not going to take up too much processing power. But if you're working on a complete song where you have a track that has a ton of different effects, some of them take up more juice than others, and your CPU is being heavily used, you can transform that track. So let's go ahead and right click in the track column here. And then we can see near the center, we have transform to rendered audio. I'll go ahead and click once on that. We have preserve real time state. Now this is, is important to keep in mind. If you leave this checked, then you're going to be able to go back to the original state. So I always leave this checked. If you're using something like delay or reverb that trails off after the event ends here or the track, you'll want to be sure that you check this and maybe add 
the amount of time that you think is necessary to include that reverb or delay tail. But we don't have any reverb or delay, so I'm just gonna leave that unchecked. I'm gonna click on OK. All right, so now when I play this back, we can hear that auto filter has been printed to this event and to this track. But if we look at the inspector, it's no longer in our insert section. Now we can take a look next to this little waveform icon for our audio track and see that there's a little yellow dot there. Now these are gonna signify that this track has been transformed and we do have the ability to convert it back to its original state. So we can again, right click in the track column and then we can come down again near the center, transform to real time audio. Once I click on that, we're now taken back to the original state. We have our shade here that we can make adjustments to if we need or any of the other inserts that you may have on your particular track. Now, another thing that we can do with bounce is converting stereo tracks to mono. And sometimes when I receive mixes from clients to do a mix for them, some of their tracks that were recorded in mono, like vocals, will end up as stereo tracks in Studio One, but I don't want that because if we have a audio file that was recorded in mono, but it then shows up as a stereo track in Studio One, that's just a dual mono. I don't really want that. And you're, we're doubling the file size for no reason. So we can click on this little button here. That's gonna change this track to mono. We can see that that now says mono here. If I click again, we can see stereo, but I'll click on that to change it to mono. Let's again, control B and take notice that we have two waveforms currently, but after I control B, first let's select it. Okay, now we have one single waveform and this audio event has been converted to a mono file. Now let's play back again. And we can hear our shade is active there. Uh, but I wanted to show that if we'd like to bounce to a new track, we do have that option. So. Again, I'll right click and let's come to the event section and we can see here we have bounce to new track and we can also use the shortcuts control alt B. I'll go ahead and click on that. Now we have a new track that's been created. And if I put this into solo and play back, we can hear that that shade effect has been applied to this new track that was created. Now, another thing you may notice here is that we are back to having two waveforms. So our mono event here, or our mono track, when we bounce to a new track, it's actually been, cre it's actually created a stereo. Okay, we may not want that. So let's again undo, and we'll right click, come back to the event section, and then just notice here that this is actually a recent change. We have this bounce to new track, keep speaker format. Now we don't have shortcut keys set up uh, by default, but you can always go to your shortcut keys in Studio One and add your own. But once I click on this, then we can see that uh, we now retain that mono format on our new track. And again, if I solo and play back, we can hear that the shade insert was included or printed to this new event, although it is not in our inserts here because it's been printed. Now, one last thing to keep in mind about bouncing tracks or transforming tracks is that if we have any inserts or processing on our master channel, those are not gonna be included when we perform these actions. Now to finish up, we're gonna hop over to a different song here and let's just go ahead and play this back. We're gonna take a look at transforming buses. Have you ever listened to people from the inside? Let's open up the mix console. Listen so close. So here I have thoughts. two presence instruments that are being routed to bus, bus one. We can see no, that here. Memories. Let's solo that. Okay, so if we were to right click on this bus, we can see we have transformed to rendered audio. So I'll go ahead and click once on that. Okay, so once it's finished processing, we can see now we have a single channel labeled as bus one. And we again have that yellow dot that we saw when we transformed the audio track in the other example, letting this know that this was transformed and we can also go back to the, its original state. So then if I play back, 
This is still routed to our effects channel for the reverb. Let's come back. places that they don't even know they think from. Okay, now, so again, if I were to right click on this channel, we can transform to bus channel. And then now we return to our original state with the two presence instruments being routed to our bus and ascend from our bus to the reverb. Okay, so we'll wrap up here, guys. I hope this has been useful. And if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one training with me, I do provide that. You can find out more information by checking out the pinned comment below or the description of the, or rather description area of this video. And otherwise, I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.